is lesson 1-6, our mean, median, mode, and range. Measures of central tendency are just that, mean, median, and mode. They're a way of being able to look at your data and best summarize it. The mean is the average of the set of data. The average is found by taking the number, the sum of your data items, and dividing it by the number of data items. We'll look at that in more detail in a minute. You always use the mean when your data does not have an outlier. An outlier is a data value that is much higher or much lower than all the other data values in the set. For example, let's say you took a quiz in your science class and your teacher posted all the scores on the board. Didn't say who got what score, but they posted the following scores. There was a 72, a 98, a 63, a 77, an 82, an 89, a 41, a 76, and then a 92. If you look at all those data values, some are good, some are not so good, but there is one that stands out as being particularly low. That happens to be the 41. 41 would be considered to be an outlier because it is much lower than the rest of the data. And it can change your data. You always want to be careful not to use mean when you have an outlier because it can skew your data. Median is the middle value in a set when the numbers are arranged in order. You use it when the data has an outlier. So in other words, if I was to, to find a median, you just look at your values. You have to put them in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, and then you find the middle number. You use this when your data has an outlier. If you have two middle numbers, let's say we have the following pieces of data, 20, 30, and 40. Our mean would be found by adding those together and dividing by 3, but our median is simply the middle number. In this case, my median would be 30. However, let's just say I had a set of data that looked like this, 20, 20. 30, 40. Now I have two middle numbers. If I have two middle numbers, to be able to determine what my mean, my median is, I would have to add those two numbers to get up and divide them by 2. Well, 20 plus 30 is 50. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So my mean, my median, excuse me, would be 25. The mode is the data value that occurs the most times. You can have no mode, one mode, or more than one mode. You use this when data is non-numeric. What is meant by non-numeric? Things that are opinion questions. Non-numeric means opinion. For example, what's your favorite color? I can spell this would be good. Favorite color can't really find a mean or a median for it, so it's just mode. If 18 people choose red as their favorite color, then the mode would be 18. The range is the difference between the greatest and the least, least data values. You simply subtract. A stem and leaf is a display of data using the digits of the values, and we'll get into that in more detail in a few minutes. Let's look at computing some, some values. Let's say you receive the following rates, an 85, a 70, a 90, a 65, a 60, an 80, and a 90. How would you figure out how you were doing in your class? Well, to do this, we should probably figure out the mean, the median, the mode, the range, and determine which is the best measure of central tendency. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in order, from smallest to largest. The easiest way to do this is look at your data set and find the smallest number. In this case, it's 60. I'm going to check that off so that I know I've already dealt with that. Don't mark it out because if you, if you mark it out completely, you can't read it, and then you're not sure what to do if you make a mistake. My next number, 65, then 70, then 80, then 85, then 90, and last but not least, 90 again. I'll check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have seven data values. I've listed them all. It's always good to double check. And they are in order. So if I wanted to find my mean, 
My mean is found by adding up all my data values and dividing by the number of data values. So I'm going to add up all my data values. 60 plus 65 plus 70 plus 80 plus 85 plus 90 plus 90. If you show the work just like I just showed it here, I will allow you to use a calculator because this can get fairly cumbersome. When we add all of this up, this equals 540. There were seven data values, so we're going to take that and divide by seven. That's the number of data values. If I take 540 and I divide it by 7 using my calculator, I get 77.1428, or approximately 77.1. So there is my mean. My median is my middle number, and they're put in order, which I did first because I knew I was going to get, need to get to that. So if I look at this, if I need to find my median, I'm going to look and say there are seven of them, so three on each end, the number in the middle, the number in the middle is 80, so my median, therefore, is 80. My mode. The mode is the number that occurs most often. I have one number that occurs most often, and it's 90, so my mode is 90. My range is the difference between my highest number, 90, and my lowest number, 60, so my range is 30. If I look at my data, I can see that I do not have an outlier. Even though some people would try to say that 60 is an outlier, it's really not that far out because if you go 60 to 65, 65 to 70, there's no outlier in this data. Since there is no outlier in this data, the best measure of central tendency is your mean. So, to recap, we found our mean, we found our median, we found our mode and range, determined there was no outlier, therefore, since there was no outlier, the best measure is your mean. Let's look at another problem. Suppose your grades on three science exams are 82, 94, and 89. What grade do you need on your next exam to have an average of 90? Well, you have three exams and you know you're going to have a fourth exam. Since we don't know the score on that fourth exam, that fourth exam is an unknown. So we need to give it a value to put in. Since it's an unknown, we're going to give it a variable, and I'm going to give it the variable x. To find my mean, because it says that I have to have an average, which is the mean, to find my mean for this data, we would take our, our test scores, which are 82 plus 94, plus 89, plus that missing fourth test score, we would divide it by 4, and we're going to hope that that average is greater than or equal to the 90. Let's just say your parents told you that if you get a 90 for your average for your science class for the quarter, they will let you go to that concert you've been bugging them about to go with, to, with, with all your friends. So you really want to get a, at least a 90 for a class average. So, since we know that we have to have a fourth test score, we've determined that our fourth test score is going to be x. I'll place an x right there. So there's my equation. 82 plus 94 plus 89 plus x divided by 4. It's going to be greater than or equal to 90. To solve this equation, we're simply going to add 82, 94, and 89 first. And we get 265. So I will have 265 plus x divided by 4, and I'm just going to get rid of the inequality and call it equal to 90, because if I get a 90, I know that I'll be good, so anything above that will still be good. I need to solve this equation for x. To solve it for x, I'm simply going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 to eliminate my denominator. So now I have 265 plus x equals 90 times 4, which is 360. To solve for this, I need to get x by itself, so I'm simply going to subtract 265 from both sides of the equation. 265 minus 265 gives me 0, so I have x on the left-hand side of the equation. 360 minus 265 leaves me with 95. So I now know that my last test score must be a 95 or greater. And since this is a word problem, you'll notice that I did answer it in a complete sentence. All word problems should always be answered in a complete sentence. All right, 
let's take a look at a stem and leaf plot for just a moment. To make a stem and leaf plot, the thing that you need to pay attention to is all the digits to the left of the last digit are the stem, and the last digit is the leaf. So a leaf is only a one-digit number. So you could have a one-digit stem, a two-digit stem, a three-digit stem, but you can never have more than a one-digit leaf. To make a stem and leaf plot, the easiest thing to do is to make your lovely little table. We're going to have stems and we're going to have leaves. Okay, stem, leaf. You don't have to label it S and L if you don't want to. If I look at this, I have numbers in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and that's it. I have no numbers in the 30s, no in the 70s or 80s. So my stems, okay, since these are two digit numbers, my stems are going to be four, five, and six, because you always put those in order, smallest to largest. Now, when we label our leaves, we have to do the same thing. We're going to put our leaves in, in order from smallest to largest. So if you wanted to, you could take this data set right here, and you can put it in order if you wanted to. You don't have to if you can do it as, as you're working through the problem. I can look here, and I'm going to just highlight for a second all of my numbers in the 40s. I have 44. I have 47, I have 49. I have three numbers in the 40s. The smallest is 44, so that I'm, I'm going to leave, make that leaf be a 4, and then my next leaf is a 7, and my next leaf is a 9. Don't put commas between your leaves, you just leave spaces. If I was going to look at my 50s, my numbers in the 50s now, I would look at those. I have 56, 58, 51, 59, another 51, a 50, and that's all my numbers in the 50s. So if I'm going to get the leaves for that, the smallest number is 50 right there, so there's a zero. Then I have 51. I have two of those, so I have to list that leaf twice. There's a 51 there, and there's a 51 there. If I'm looking at it, my next smallest is 56. That's this number right here. And then I go 58, which is my last leaf right here. Now I look at my numbers in my 60s, which are the only ones not highlighted. So they're fairly easy to be able to figure out. So I look at this, and I can see that I have two 63s. So I have a 3 and a 3. And I have a, a 65. So I have a 5. So I have my 3, my 3, my 5. And then I have a 66. And I have a 67. If I count how many numbers I had up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I should have 14 leaves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Look, I'm missing a leaf. I have to figure out where we lost a leaf. And I can clearly see right here, I forgot 59. So luckily it's in order and I can add the 9 to the end. If it's out of order, you can squeeze it in someplace else. If you want, you can put commas between them, but they're generally not here. The last thing you need to do on a stem and leaf plot is you have to make a key. People need to know what these numbers here represent. They have no idea how to read this. This should be read as 44, 47, 49. To tell someone that, you put a little key down here, and I can say 4 slash 4. 4 equals 44. So now people know that that's how you read your stem and leaf plot. Once you're done, you could also find the mean, median, mode, and range for this. And now that a stem and leaf plot is in order when you're done, so that makes it nice and tidy.